Welcome to Sketching Basics. What we want to do is we want to practice on sketching this particular object. This is a miniature porcelain Chinese vase. And so what we want to do when we sketch is we want to think about two things. We want to think about the perimeter of the object itself, the interior elements, not so much the graphics or that sort of thing. We want to focus on the mass. So the first thing we want to do when we're sketching, and the thing that makes a sketching accurate, is to work with proportion and scale. And so we always, you know, we could put a piece of tissue paper down over the top of this and, and simply trace it, and that would be one way to do it. But when we're sketching and practicing our sketching techniques, we want to try to utilize our paper. So we're going to work this whole area here. So I want to make this object, and I want to draw it this big. Now, one of the ways that we can look at proportions so that we can start getting our mind is with a grid technique. So what we'll need for this exercise is your two pencils with, again, a chiseled point or a rounded point, a straight edge, and then just a scrap piece of tissue paper um, is perfectly fine. This one's just a little long. This is what we're gonna call our handy dandy measuring device. So we'll be using this throughout the semester or, or the technique throughout the semester. So the first thing we wanna do is kind of analyze our object. So what I wanna do is I want to find the exterior tangent points. That's, that's the farthest point, left, right, top, bottom. So right here is this tangent point and I'm gonna take my straight edge I'm gonna come right across that. And then I'm gonna find the bottom one and I want it to be nice and horizontal. So you can line it up here on the side of your paper if that helps. And then that's my bottom point. So here's my tangent, the lowest point, and here is the highest point. Then I wanna do the sides. So again, I can line it up with the top of my sheet and the triangle. So I get a nice square line and it is almost perfectly square uh, on the elements that we're looking at here. So that's the piece, that's the overall size of the piece. So what I wanna do is kind of double the size over here. So the first thing I wanna know is what is the relationship between the width and the height? So let's take a look. That's where our handy dandy measuring device comes into play. So I'm gonna measure the shorter one and I'm gonna put a tick mark right here and a tick mark on the other side. So that's matching the rectangle that I do. Now I'm gonna pull this down on the side and I wanna see what the height is. So if I measure one width and two width, it's almost exactly twice as tall as it is wide. So if I come over here and I wanna make it twice as wide, I can use my measurement here and say that's one measurement and that's two measurements. So I'm gonna put a horizontal line across here. And again, use the side or the edge of your paper to kind of use your triangle. So there's my width. So now let's do a height. So I'm gonna put in a quick line so that I have something to actually measure. And I'm arbitrarily putting that. So if this is two wides, then it has to be four highs. So that's one, two, three, and four. Oh, it comes all the way down to the bottom of my page. So I might wanna have moved it up, in fact, now, we'll just do it. If you can see the bottom, I'll have moved my scale up a little bit. And again, just to be accurate, I can come over here and measure two widths at the bottom. And then I know I'm absolutely parallel. And then across the bottom. 
So hopefully that's showing up in the screen. Can you all see that? So this rectangle that's around this parameter is exactly the same proportion as this rectangle. So now what I wanna do is I wanna start breaking down the parts and pieces. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna create a grid. So I'm gonna take the halfway point. So that's my width. And if I just fold that in half, put my little tick marks together there, do you see that? So I have that tick mark and that tick mark. And I just measure over halfway. You'll get much better at this and you'll be able to guess at it. But there is my center line dividing point. And then I want to do a center line and I've already measured that because I had too high, didn't I? So I'm gonna put a horizontal across here. All right, so now I'm gonna just transfer that over. Hopefully you can see all of this. So, there is my midpoint, and there is my halfway point. Again, I'm just gonna line it up over here on the side of my paper, square this side, drop it down. And now this bisector is the same as this bisector. So I can start, so I have four quadrants here. So I can start getting an understanding of exactly where my tangent points are. So what I want to do is come over here and let's take the let's take the rim itself. All right, I can see that the next tangent point is just below the line where the curve of the top drops down. So I can kind of I could measure it and double it or I can kind of guesstimate at it. So I'm just going to guesstimate over here that that's one of my tangent points. The other tangent point is almost exactly the same on this side since the photograph is done square. Then, now, do you see where this edge starts to roll? It's pretty straight up and down right here, but then it starts to pull in at that point. I wanna know what that point is right there. That one right there. So if I take this out over here, I can start to see that it is about a third of the way down. So again, this is what we call guesstimating. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna divide this into thirds. So I'm gonna say third, and then another third is about here. And that's just about where the tangent point is that that side comes in on. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw myself a little line across that point. Now I wanna know from the edge in how far that is. And it's almost a third of the way on this measurement. So if that's half, then a third is here and a third is here. So my tangent point is right here. That's that one point right on this side and the other side, and I can do pretty much the same on this side. And the rest is that, that bottom pedestal. Now, if I come up here where it starts to curve in, is almost to the top of this line, a little higher than a third of the way. So I'm just gonna put another point there and another point there on that side, because that's about the same. That's where it starts to taper in. Now, I'm gonna go back up to the top, and remember how when we set this point right here, if we look at where the bottom of that opening is, it's about twice as far, so it's about here. So if that went across here, I'm just gonna, so those are my two outside tangents. And then that's how far the opening is that I can see. So now I've got this piece, this piece. Let's look at the base. Now the base is a little asymmetrical. So we can see that there is like a little OG kind of, turn here. So that's a little bit difficult, but it's right below this point. So let's find what this curve is. Do you see this curve? Let's find the bottom of that curve is about right there. So I have a curve up here and I have a curve down here. So it's going to connect that point, that point, and that point. And it's a relatively flat curve. 
Then the center, if I see where the top of that point is, it's almost right in the middle and just below the piece at the side. This foot is just to the left of this line. And then it goes up just a hair, so its other point is here. And then it kind of wraps around. So this is going to drop down just a hair. And on this side, it's going to do the same thing. It's just going to drop down a hair, but it has to end up right here at this point, which was about a quarter of the way up. So I can start to kind of, you know, remember the multi-line technique that we learned? We're going to use that a lot. So I can come in here and I can lightly that's my outside, so my curve of my top. Now remember it wraps, it's not a point, so it wraps up in here. And there's a curved line there, it's not a point. And then that's the top of the rim. So I can kind of ease that in, and if it doesn't work the first time, you just go over it that with that multi-line technique. Again, it, we want to hit here, so we're going to connect this line to this line. And then all the way up. And you can wobble a little bit. Now let's try getting this curve right in here. I think I have it might, might be just a little low, but that's that roundedness. It's very flat. So we're just gonna try that space just a little bit. Now we can come in. We know that this foot kind of comes at an angle and then it comes up and then flattens out peaks at that point, peaks at that point. Then between here and there, this foot is rounded here and it goes through down and around, down and around. Now we can see a little bit of thickness of the pottery here and a little bit of thickness of the pottery here might be even able to see some there. So let's see if we can get this rounded part. It doesn't go all the way out to the edge, but it rounds here and then it comes down to the foot. It rounds and comes down to the foot. Now remember that this is a little bit of an angle here and a little bit of an angle over here. This other foot is right back here where we can't see it. So there is kind of the overall shape of this particular object. And keep in mind that what we're looking at in this particular drawing is the perimeter. We can come in and make some changes to that and go over it several times, up and around, and then down. Does that make sense? So we've taken this picture and we've doubled the size of it over here. All right, we'll try another one of these exercises um, in our next worksheet. Thank you.